All right, hey everybody, and welcome to the free life drawing class, 90 Mac, 90 minute art challenge every Wednesdays, 9 a.m. to 10:30 a.m. Pacific time. Brought to you by Schoolism, the place to go for all your artistic educational needs. Subscribe to Schoolism and get over 50 courses made to perfection with assignments to go with them and everything it's kind of like netflix for artists except the more you binge the better you get at art and it's also brought to you by lightbox expo that happens this year october 14th to the 16th at uh, pasadena convention center in la these pictures by the way these were all taken before the pandemic just to let you know we will be taking full precautions of course but this is the event to go to to meet all the artists behind your favorite things lightbox expo okay here we go so uh that's the first pose there but just to let you know here's how it works okay uh one minute poses uh we're gonna do four one minute poses four two minute poses four five minute poses and then five ten minute poses and that's pretty much 90 minutes altogether, uh and that's that's the whole entire thing okay so here we go with the very first pose one minute starting now Also, don't worry too much. Of course, I always mention this, but it's important to not worry too much about what you actually draw. This is more, much more about kind of like going to the gym, doing the exercises, doing them regularly. So eventually we get better and better. Also, for those of you that would like to ask questions, you can feel free to ask any questions in slido.com. You can see the details in the bottom of the uh, screen there. Or you could join our Discord and ask questions in there. So you can see a one minute pose. You don't have too much time to do much of anything. And that, that's it. That's the one minute pose. Okay, so we're going to start another one minute pose here. Starting now. I was mentioning uh, the Discord, I think. If I didn't, uh, that's the other thing I want to mention. You could also go to the Lightbox Expo Discord. We have a dedicated Discord for Lightbox Expo, and there you can meet other artists with like-minded artists um, and sketch with them during the 90 Mac, the 90 Minute Art Challenge uh, life drawing class. go by real quick all right so that's the second one minute pose we're gonna go to the third one one minute pose okay starting now
All right. Fourth one minute pose, last one minute pose. This just makes me think, what is he protecting behind that door? A lot of these feel like things that I would want to just, you know, expand on even after uh, life drawing. Yeah. These are super cool by you. Oh, big shout out to uh, Arm Street for supplying uh, these beautiful photographs. Thank Arm you. Street is where you would go to actually buy this stuff. You know, if you really, really are interested in armor, why don't you get your own set and then you could um, draw yourself and draw the stuff up close. See how it's all put together. I feel like at some point we will all be wearing armor while doing these lessons. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. That'd be cool. Okay, two minutes, the first two minute pose. There's a question on the Slido. Um, if you guys have any tips for stylization when it comes to these references. Yeah. Um, look for the essence of what it is that you want to do as opposed to copying, uh, you know, proportions, angles. And if you want like a in-depth, um, an in-depth kind of uh, explanation. For everything, I, I want to also be able to suggest uh, schoolism courses if, uh, if they match the answer. So for this one, I would say the Wouter Tulp's class of expressive characters, you know, designing characters, or Daniel Ariega. Daniel's course, you know, he was the art director for Coco. And of course that won the Oscar and everything and he was the art director for the characters. He really talks about that kind of stuff a lot and shows you a lot of that kind of stuff through his uh, demos, how he takes an image and really extrapolates the essence of it and stylizes it, creating these beautiful designs. Okay, that was the first two minute. Here's the second one. The other thing is there's all sorts of different levels. Don't feel like um, you have to keep up with whoever, whoever you might be drawing with. You know, we're all on our own path. And sometimes it might be more effective for people if they just stuck to, say, a part of the subject. You know, things to think about. Like this one, I'm not really thinking to complete the entire image. I really just want to do whatever I can with the upper portion of this pose. And when you 
you think about the essence of the pose, the essence of the subject, it allows you to make changes, you know, to better support your idea as well. Beautiful, Kay. Oh, my goodness. You too, Kay. It's so challenging. <laughs> I bet yeah. everyone is focused. But look at these images, though, right? Doesn't this just scream at you like, oh, I need to do a oh, whole yes. painting? This one is really cool. Beautiful. Such a cool-looking um, pose. Such a cool-looking such cool-looking armor. Mm -hmm. the amount of detail even looking just at the boots it's crazy oh yeah so good it really does make me want to it makes me want to kind of get a, a thing of armor you know because <laughs> i feel like it would be so helpful there's so many different subjects that it could help right because like so even space suits if, a lot of if time. you feel you need some protection while drawing uh -huh. you should definitely get one <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. If you see a knight in shining armor at Lightbox, then you know <laughs> where it all stemmed from. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to add some lights to mine since it's like Lightbox. Yeah, protector of the realm, <laughs> of the light box realm. Yeah. Ah, it's a whole new definition to moderating. Yeah, yeah. With a giant uh, Wacom pen instead of a <laughs> sword. I love it. <laughs> Only the ones know will know. Yeah, this armor and this pose, so cool. Oops. All right, so that's the end of that one. Fourth two-minute pose. Starting now. I feel like the last one and this one could become one illustration, you know? Like the one is walking towards the other or something. Yeah. That would be neat if we just combined them. Oh, uh, that would have been cool if you drew one and then I drew the other. Kind of like old days when we used to <laughs> paint on each other's stuff. Good old days. Or I used to paint on your stuff, mostly. I don't think you've ever painted on my stuff. Well, because you're the better painter. <laughs> nice, nice excuse there. There's so many parts. That's what slows you down, huh? Oh yeah, just breaking up those that armor. <laughs> it's hard not to get lost in it. And all that detail. You can always tell kind of like what's the hard subject with how many questions come in. You know, if it's hardly any questions, it's like that's a hard subject. Everybody's really concentrating.
don't forget to breathe everybody breathe. <laughs> good one <laughs> <laughs> i'm holding my breath too our artist life hack don't forget to breathe <laughs> to breathe keep calm keep it loose keep it flowing <laughs> it's all practice oh that's another nice one kid all right we're on to five minute poses everybody so Ooh, a real cool five minute pose to start off with wow she deserves an entire story around it that's crazy so much fun all right i'm gonna try to switch it up somehow try something a little tiny bit different Sometimes I also think like some strokes would be easier traditional <laughs> digital. Oh, hundred. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. My goodness, yes. This would go so differently uh, traditional. Yep. I'm crashing and burning, but you know what? I'm just trying some stuff, so it's all right. Yep, just try stuff. As a Slido question, uh, what is the funniest yet, yet useful tricks you have used in your art and sketching? tricks tricks i feel like like observational kind of sketching my just sketching people where um like i'm sketching that one person but when i raise my head up i just kind of glance over to the next person right and i just kind of look real quick and i look at the next person that person thinks that i'm drawing somebody else but i'm actually drawing them <laughs> That's kind of fun. I don't know. Don't have too many tricks, I feel. Funniest, yeah. Nothing really comes to mind. So another question, uh, do you have any advice for having less rigid forms when constructing poses or less stiff drawings in general? Let go and just <laughs> let go. <laughs> let it flow, let it flow. And just, um... I think the stiffness comes from in unfamiliarity as well, right? Yeah, that's true. Like imagine you sketch a person for like a thousand times, the same freaking pose, the same person. And I asked you, I go, emergency, we need that pose done, a new one done in like five minutes. I guarantee you'll be able to do that in a nice loose way, but still it feels nice and tight and everything. You know, it's kind of like, um, with so many things with especially uh, I think about like martial arts, you know, they say 
first you don't know how to fight. You don't know how to punch, right? So you just kind of punch. Then you learn the mechanics of punching, and then your punch is very stiff. But then you get better and better at it to the point where you don't need to think about it anymore, and then all of a sudden you're just punching. But this time the punch is like at a another level. Okay, so that was five minutes. And that's the perfect. Here we go. Second five minute pose. Starting now. <laughs> <laughs> Who's hungry? Who wants chicken? This guy does. That's good. This expression is so funny. <laughs> oh, the screen's just loading back up. Okay. I read something today. Uh, which I didn't really realize before, but like, of course, those knights had to spend training on where, like, learning to wear the armor while moving and stuff like that as well. Oh, yeah. Which and makes total sense, but I didn't realize it before I read it today. <laughs> think about like this scenario in the snow and the cold. Like, I I live in Toronto, so I know all about like metal and cold makes the flesh stick to it if it's slightly you know uh, wet wet or whatever I wonder what's going on in these kind of situations yeah it's kind of dangerous you got to make sure your flesh does not have any contact with the metal I have a lovely question, uh, someone from uh, our Slido, Nicole, is asking, either of you have ever visited any castles? Must have, yeah. right? Yeah. Must have. Many. Um, <laughs> which castles come to mind, Bobby? There was a cool one. There was a small cool one in, um, uh, in Copenhagen. Is that right? Across the street from where we were doing our workshop. Oh, yeah. And they had a cool um, treasury. Mm -hmm. They had all these jewelry and the old swords and stuff. And um, yeah, so neat. Jewels, like giant jewels and things. Yeah. I, yeah, I can't forget that one because we went with um, Claire. Uh, when we, she yeah. just kept talking about um, the spoons that we would find there, like the ancient spoons, because she loves. She loves spoons. Oh, she, yeah. That's so funny. I can't <laughs> just... that. And they had like a neat collection of all these, you know, medieval spoons of all sorts of sizes and <laughs> material. And yeah, it was so fun. We just kept talking about spoons. Or dragons protecting the spoons. Right? Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I have the same thing with boxes. I love a good. <laughs> 
oh. ordnance box. <laughs> And uh, uh, talking about castles, we actually uh, have a small castle here in Hazel. In the oh, yeah? Of us, yeah. It's a small one, but it's, there is one. Castles are cool. There is a lovely one that we partied in uh, that I could I'll never forget that one. Oh, that one. yeah. Is that in Angoulême? That was in Angoulême, and it was like supposedly the castle of the princes of Angoulême. But now they, you know, they just host parties there, and <laughs> lavish parties. And yeah, it was wild, like partying in a castle. Yeah, that was a great party, too. Oh, gosh, yes. Can't forget their hors d'oeuvres. It was just like doused in um, liquor. Yeah, those got me pretty <laughs> drunk. <laughs> I didn't realize until I bit into it and it's like, wow, I never knew to fit gushing. so much liquor into a tiny little morsel. But that was really cool because it was in Angoulême, the Angoulême uh, Ben Disney. I miss that place. Um, yeah, that was amazing. And really, uh, so what that is, it's like, it's like a Comic-Con. Um, in Angoulême, France, and that's where Claire Wendling lives, by the way. Uh, so we're there. We would go there every year, Kay and I, um, to do our. You know, we had a booth and stuff. We don't go there anymore because things got too busy. But before, when we went there, um, it was really great because, well, first whole bunch of people are speaking French not very many people are speaking English and then you got other people that are speaking Italian or or German or whatever it's like this United Nations of people uh, there to sell art and comic books and stuff and then we befriended these um, these Italians there that would bring their own homemade absinthe and all this stuff and we couldn't communicate, you know, we would just communicate through gestures. Yeah, um, those right? guys. <laughs> those cool. guys, yeah. And we just partied with them, like, without talking to each other, but we understood each other. Yeah, like, we would we would talk to each other. We would say English. They would say Italian. We don't know if they're understanding us. And, frankly, we don't know if we understand them. But, but we all got along. We were all like, yeah, yeah let's do that. So much fun. I yeah. love that kind of stuff. It's like art brought us together. Mm -hmm. It's the coolest thing ever. Yeah, so anyways, I forget how we even ended up at this party because I, I don't remember who invited us or if we just crashed it. But we ended up in this castle of the uh, the princess that used to once live in Angoulême. And so, you know, at Comic-Con, it's great. It's so cool because you'll get to attend these parties at, with Disney or whatever, and they'll rent out a whole restaurant. Right? You go to Angoulême. They throw a party. You're partying in a freaking 600-year-old castle. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, so much fun. And by the end of it, it's like we're all talking to each other in our own languages. And like I was saying before, did we even understand what we were saying to each other? I don't know. <laughs> but we had a great time. Probably explains though why you didn't remember how you got there. You didn't understand <laughs> what they were saying. Exactly. <laughs> we're just like, uh huh. All right, sounds cool. Let's go party. You know, it's like it's these kind of things. It's it can be not the safest thing in the world to just go off somewhere or whatever. You don't know where you're going. But sometimes they make for the coolest stories too. It's not any life advice but just like our own experiences. I had this other experience before I met Kay. Um, I did this trip to China, right? And I'm, 
I'm there on a tour. I went there by myself, really, and uh, met all these friends, which is something else I totally recommend, going traveling by yourself. But um, it was... It was the announcement of the Beijing, or the, yeah, the Beijing Olympics. And I was interested because Toronto was in the running for the Olympics. And uh, everybody's crowded around this TV set in a mall looking, you know, watching the results. I'm also there. And then they announced that it's not Toronto that gets it. It's Beijing that gets it. And I'm in Beijing at the time. And I see fireworks. All of a sudden, they cut to fireworks in the TV. And I look off in the distance. I see the exact same fireworks. And then I see a bunch of uh, you know, young, vibrant people running towards a bus. So I start running towards the bus, too. Where's that bus going? I have no idea. And then I get on the bus. And next thing you know, I'm in uh, Tiananmen Square with half a million people. Half a million people drinking, having fun, uh, singing songs that I didn't understand. I was probably singing a bunch of communist songs. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but whatever. It was just like this amazing, fun time. People are having fun beyond the boundaries of language. Okay, I think I'm going to switch this up again and go back to more of a drawing technique. It's funny how the responsible side of my personality thinks. Let's be thankful Bobby's still here today <laughs> for that story. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's this other time where this guy, he... um. He, I forget how this one happened. Uh, oh, I, I was, this was at Lightbox. You remember this one, Kay? I was walking, you weren't there with me, but I told you this story. I was walking to the hotel and this guy is behind me and he's like, Bobby, Bobby, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, hey, how's it going? And then, um, yeah, I'm putting some stuff into my room. And he follows me and he's like, can I show you my portfolio? You know, I'm like, uh, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, break it out. You know, we're in the lobby of this hotel, and I figure he has it on him. And he goes, oh, no, no. Um, oh, sorry. First, he starts telling me. Uh, no, no, sorry. Okay, he yeah, do you want to see my <laughs> do you want to see my portfolio? I go, yeah, sure. We go. And he goes, uh, instead of breaking it out, he goes, yeah, just come with me to my room. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, uh, okay. Right. <laughs> and so we go up in the elevator and we go into his room. Mm -hmm. And uh, the room door is open because the cleaning lady's inside um, cleaning up his room or whatever. And he grabs his portfolio and starts to show me and start and um, starts to tell me that he's changing his career. He used to make like weapons, you know, like um, not fun weapons like this kind of thing for LARPing or something like that, but like weapons for the, you know, army for that kind of stuff. Um, and he doesn't want to do that anymore. He wants to do children's kind of illustration. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, the talk got kind of intense because he's talking about, like, why he doesn't like designing weapons and things like this. Yeah. Yeah. And, he, you know, if I had any better judgment, I probably would have not gone into his room, followed yeah. him there. But I did. And then in the end, he was cool. He was a nice guy. And then I left there and it was fine, you know? But yeah, I should probably stop doing those kind of things. 
So I wonder how Kay is, what Kay is thinking when you tell her the story for the first time. Oh, yeah. every step of the way, it's like, oh, she was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, it was a lot of like, what? And then, what? <laughs> <laughs> please don't do that again. And please yeah. make sure you have somebody with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one time we were abandoned by our driver in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. That was really scary. For a second. After that, it's fine. Lots of fun adventures. Thank goodness we're here to tell the tale. <laughs> Another reason you need uh, an armor, uh, Bobby. <laughs> you yeah. go to my <laughs> sure, I'll take a look at your portfolio. <laughs> Give me a second. I gotta put on my armor. Oh my god, that yeah. metal thing looks so amazing, Kay. Oh, so cool. Jeez. Sorry, whatever. Oh my god. I like your drawing. Yeah. Okay, so nice. time flies when you're doing the Nighty Mac. Ten minute pose starting now. Here's the first one. Ooh. Handsome. The dark night appears. Dun, dun, dun. He's so handsome. Um, I, there's a question on Slido, and I think this is a good one for this one particular uh, from Custard. Do you have any tips on drawing facial features, expression on small faces? When, when they have a face that's like super tiny, it oh. gets like super messy. So how to combat that? Um, yeah, I think, were you going to say something, Kay? Nope. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, like, uh, when you look at almost anything, you draw it up close, you got to draw it differently than when you draw it far away. So that's number one. Uh, just to be aware that it doesn't end at faces. It's literally for everything. If you think about hair and you draw hair up close, you're drawing a lot of strands. You draw a person with hair far away and you're not drawing all those strands, right? You're drawing um, almost like a solid shape now, uh, maybe with some accents of hair. And then you go further away and there's no more accents of hair. It's just a shape. So when you're dealing with faces, it's kind of the same thing where, um, well, you want to think about what are the important details when it's at this range as opposed to this other range. The other thing that you could do is just paint and draw it from far away and deal with it. Struggle. I know you want to zoom in, but don't zoom in. Like that kind of thing. You'll see in, like if you watch um, like a lot of the webinars that we've been doing on schoolism, uh, we've been doing a lot where the, the artist is demoing, right? And so many times it's like they're demoing from far away. They're not zooming in. I think the one with uh, the legend, the master, Nathan Fawkes, I think uh, Patricia, you were there for that one, right? Yes. <laughs> and he did the demo and he painted from, he never zoomed in. Do you, yeah, I, I don't know true. if you recall that. Yeah. It's very interesting because he's demoing an entire environment. Why are you not zooming in for a landscape as opposed to just a little character in the landscape? How come you aren't zooming in for a whole entire landscape? But he doesn't.
a lot of times when you resist um, a bunch of stuff and you just try to work with what you got, then when you bring in the stuff that you wanted to bring in the first time, um, because you resisted a bunch, everything becomes even more effective. So for example, if you want to bring in the details, say you wanted to paint in those eyes, but you struggle and you keep going without painting in the eyes in that portrait. If you can get that portrait to start looking like the person, I know it sounds weird, without actually putting in the eyes, but only with the eye area, all of a sudden you drop in those eyes and it becomes, it just, it's like looking into the soul of a person and looks so much like the person, right? And it feels so much like the person. So that's a great exercise to do. Uh, I would say that that's for intermediate to uh, professionals, you know, practice painting portraits without actually painting the eyes of the person and trying to make it actually feel like the person by just painting in the eye area. That's something we did with uh, Jonathan Hardesty workshop. And oh. it was about actually painting uh, eyes. But uh, the most important thing we got is painting the eye area, just not the eye itself. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Which is funny. Yeah. Yeah, because no, that, that workshop that you had i believe it was called like painting eyes yeah, yeah yeah and then you go in and it's like yeah we're not painting eyes for a bit yeah yeah it that's was. so funny yeah i remember when i first started uh, drawing and painting it was like I would paint nothing, I would draw nothing but the eye. I didn't actually draw the eye area. I would draw the head shape and then the eyes. Right, I think we all, that's a more common kind of thing that we all kind of do at some point. Yeah, and with this picture, it's also more of a, almost like two shadows, the eyes, instead of painting the eye. Yeah. I wouldn't paint the eyes in this. There's a question on Slido from Jeanette. Um, what do you think about getting noticed? Uh, at, by, what do you think about getting to get noticed? Uh, oh, just for applying for an illustration agent, agency and how to get noticed there. Sorry, I was struggling with the question. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're the right people to ask about that because we represent ourselves. Um, we've been approached before to for people to represent us, but we never went with any of them. Um, so for you guys, it's mostly um, making kick-ass work and putting it out there and they will come to you? Yeah, you know, the... the the long game is the strong game. And what that means is like, we're always trying to do something more like the long game. We're always doing things for the, for a bigger kind of purpose, you know? So like, we're not going to just uh, look for art, art jobs. We're just gonna constantly make more, um, of our independent art if we don't have a job, right? And that way we get to draw our own stuff and uh, 
and that's fun. And then at the same time, attracting jobs. And then if, if say, uh, if say no jobs come, then you're still gaining a bigger and bigger following, right? And so over time, all of a sudden, wow, you you know you have like two hundred thousand people following you or something like that. You need a job, do some new art. It goes to two hundred thousand some odd people, and will that get you into the right, you know, eyeballs, into the right kind of channels. Yeah, very, very likely. Right, so it's it's about the long game. If I just handed out portfolios, if I just handed out resumes every time I need a job, I'm not increasing my, uh, my voice. I'm not increasing the amount of people that will... Uh, you know, know of, know of me, then that's not for the long, you know, it's not for like the long kind of game plan. I like the things where it's very much about building over a long period of time. They're far more sustainable, far more powerful. Well, Nice. I like both of ours in this one. This is it really just disappeared. Neat. What 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 disappeared? Everything. <laughs> oh. Weird. I'm just restarting now. Okay. There you oh, go. Okay. Okay. That was the first ten minute pose. Here's the second one. How cool is this one? She looks so badass. Like she looks like she's gonna just tear through anybody. I want to do color, Kay, but I'm nervous. You can do it. I've been, yeah, feeling too, you know. All right. Let's do this. It's cool how this one looks like total opposite of the, of the last reference. Yeah. It's like the heroine and the villain. On the last one. I feel like my brain really getting a workout today. Yep, 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 yep. Same. This has been good. If you guys feel like you're all getting a workout there in the uh, in the audience there, let us know. Let other people know. So we all know we're in the same boat together. to done color k i'm kind of regretting mm -hmm. it now <laughs> struggling here that's What's okay up? oh i'm just saying i'm kind of regretting doing the color thing here no regrets yeah no regrets i'm gonna bring it back get it under control yeah, and the great thing about going through stuff when you're like kind of regretting it a little bit is after going through that kind of stuff enough times, the next time that you feel a little bit of like regret for trying to do something, you also know that it's, it is possible to dig yourself out. You know, so right. it's nice to kind of. No regrets, only lessons. Love it. That should be a t-shirt. Even the reference is looking at you guys like, believe, follow my lead. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh my goodness, I need to move on. Yep, 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 yep. 
no regrets, <laughs> I guess. Lessons. <laughs> I don't even have any armor yet. I gotta do some armor. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> we have a question uh, on our Discord from Ray. Um, hey, Bobby. I hope you have a great morning. Uh, you do a lot of things uh, concerning schoolism, art, and much more. I was wondering if you could tell us what you do in a typical day and how do you manage it so well? Oh. Ah, uh, typical day, typical day. Um, so, typical day, I get up real stinking early. It's still dark outside. I do exercises first thing, because that will help me to keep doing this kind of thing for years and years. Um, and then I, you know... I make a nice breakfast and I bring that into the conversation here because if you don't have a nice breakfast, you will have less energy. So a nice healthy breakfast, um, hopefully nothing fried. <laughs> hopefully. Right, and hopefully lots of greens. I eat a lot of salads. Um, boiled egg kind of thing and no dressing on my salad it's super plain <laughs> uh, but it gives me lots of energy and I'll put on like some grains and things like that anyways you don't want to know that so moving on um, what type of grains <laughs> let's get into me I, I look for one of those packs where it's like ancient grains six ancient grains or something you know whatever fun kind of grains are in there. Um, and then I look at my to-do list. I reset my to-do list. I look at the priorities I need for today. What needs to be high priority? What needs to be lower priority? What needs to be done first, second, third, that kind of thing. And I would only set uh, two to four things as like high priority. Right, because you don't want to stress yourself out. Um, then around 8 or 9 o'clock, uh, I start to have meetings. And I could have anywhere between one meeting to like six meetings in a day. A lot of times, if it's internal meetings, as Patricia and Neld know, they probably see me going like this as I'm doing the meeting, which means I'm still painting and drawing as we're talking. Um, so that helps. And then I keep working, I keep working. I generally do, I generally slice up my day into, okay, what needs the most brain cells? I'll do those first. And I'll do the stuff that needs the least brain cells towards the end of my day because I'm just kind of exhausted, perhaps. It's harder oh. to think. Right? So um, then I guess I'm pretty much done work at about 6.30. Uh, unless things are really heavy, like right now, then I might still poke in and... Uh, do a little bit of work. I do like drive-by uh, things on my computer after work. I got my sandwich or whatever. I'll peek into the room, go to the computer, draw a little something, and I leave and eat my sandwich, <laughs> you know, like that kind of thing. Drive-bys. Um, yeah. Usually, somehow, like lately, I've just been so kind of exhausted by the end of the day, I, I kind of just pass out. I don't know when I passed out. It's usually, I wake up on the couch, and I'm like, how'd that happen? Oh, no. What? what do you mean, oh, no? You're, or are you talking about your drawing? Waking up from the couch. Oh, well, you're, yeah, you know, it's not a surprise. Um, but, yeah, I wake up on the couch, and then I, I uh, you know, do whatever chores that, I, that we need to do around the house and then I 
go to sleep in the room around, I guess, 12, 1 o'clock, something like that, lately. And then you get up again. But as long as you're doing something exciting, as long as you're doing something fun, it helps you to get up. So I, I love getting up. It's like, oh, yeah, it's another day. I got my energy back and time to do some more. It's great. And again, that's like, I feel like uh, the first thing that we talked about, the doing things with the long game in mind, that comes to play again. Um, because if you're always kind of looking for chasing that book because you got to pay that bill right stinking now, then um, you probably won't get those jobs that you want. So instead, in the very beginning, it doesn't matter if a job was paying more than another job. What matters was the subject, right? And if I, had, if I could paint a cool, interesting kind of fictional creature rather than whatever else, uh, like automobiles or something that I might not have as much interest in, that pays more, I would still take the lower paying job, right? Because I do that job well, I give them more than they ask for, it's going to lead to more jobs like that of a higher quality. Yeah, that's good advice. Well, that one was tough. So tough. Third 10 minute pose, third 10 minute pose. Here we go, a little earlier. And it's a back view. <laughs> so, you know, hopefully this will be a little better for us. A little break. <laughs> What's that? It's a little break. Yeah. Well, I try to, I try to like balance out the reference that we use between like um, easy, moderate, and difficult. I try to put in a little mix of both because it helps keep the motivation going. It does, yeah. Yeah. These easier ones help the motivation going. And then the challenging ones help you to really stretch your horizons. Oops. Oh, by the way, I also want to mention something that we're doing for charity right now. So I'm involved in this uh, this wonderful nonprofit called Superhero, uh, the Superhero Project, Superhero Kids Project, or um, yeah, Superhero Project. Anyways, so what it is is like uh, we work with. Um, kids that are sick, terminally sick, you know, seriously sick, that kind of thing, and we draw with them or we draw for them. So we would ask them to create a, uh, an idea for a superhero, right? Maybe it's uh, the one that really hit me was the one where it's like insulin woman. And so insulin woman would um, shoot little insulin things into diabetic kids that need their shots, stuff like that. It's really just wonderful. So we partnered up with um, DeviantArt to do something fun. I did a little tutorial on how to draw faces, portrait view, 
And the idea is that you would do your own portrait of a uh, superhero, a profile shot, and then every time anybody does that, then uh, DeviantArt would donate money to uh, <laughs> superhero kids, uh, the superhero project for, for kids. And this is a this is a you know nonprofit that's very dear to my heart because I know the person that started it. You know I know how dedicated she is. So if you have the time after this, you, know, you could go to my Twitter or it's really all over my social media and everything, and you could find the link there to DeviantArt, um, and then do the do a little profile for the kids. Yeah, like sometimes we donate to charity and stuff, and then we don't actually know where the stuff goes, right? And where our our dollars go, our efforts go, and everything. This one I do. I I know this person, so I vouch for for her and everything. She was doing this long before it was a it, it was a nonprofit before she ever got paid anything. She would just go out of the kindness of her heart to different hospitals and things like that and try to connect with families and kids that that could use something you know brighter in their lives and it's cool because we got like people like Ian McKegg to draw with the kids and stuff and um all sorts of people. It's been amazing. Anyways, I appreciate uh, kind of like allowing me to mention that because that's a that's a good one. Uh, there's a question on Slido from Anonymous. What platforms are good alternatives to Instagram for posting your artwork? Good question. <laughs> oh, ArtStation. There's a lot of uh, people that will find artists through ArtStation. And the cool thing about ArtStation is generally they're all artists as opposed to Instagram where they could be anybody. They could be like a chef or whatever, not, th not, not that there's anything wrong with that, and sometimes you want that, but sometimes you want artists. great knowing I don't have to paint a face. Did you guys ever uh, did some sword fighting yourself or saw some jousting uh, things? <laughs> jousting things. Um. I don't think I've ever done any sword fighting. Nope, never done. 
except for with lightsabers. Do you count that? <laughs> I don't even think I've done that. Yeah. I've done it at my buddy Justin's. <laughs> when Justin lends us his, uh, his lightsabers. Oh, cool. That's really neat. When I think of lightsabers, I always think of people making the sound effects themselves. I think it was something they told uh, once I interviewed with Ewan McGregor and they, they, he said like when they were shooting Star Wars, all the actors were making the sound effects themselves on set just because they, because there's nothing there, right? So they're like, <laughs> yeah, like that. And they had to like edit that all out just because the actors wouldn't stop doing it. <laughs> so funny. Acting seems like so much fun sometimes. You think about it. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, like I'm not, you know, like it's like sex scene or something. No thanks. That's super weird <laughs> if you think about it, right? Uh, but say you're like Lord of the Rings, I think about that, and they're running through these, they're just running through woods. But they're yeah. all dressed up, you know, in these orcs <laughs> and stuff like that. Like, that seems so cool. Yeah. For Lord of the Rings, I remember the funny story where the guy who plays Boromir, I think it's Sean, uh, Sean Bean, he has an extreme fear of heights. So all those scenes on mountains, oh. like everyone was flown there, like by a helicopter. He wouldn't go in the helicopter. So he, all, he always had to travel by foot oh to all goodness. those locations he was in. Uh, a good friend of ours is uh, Paul Lazane. He's the production designer on What If, but he was also art director on Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. And he talked about like going in a helicopter and searching for locations. You know, how cool is that? What do you think about that mountain there? Does that look like Mordor <laughs> to you? <laughs> That's crazy cool. This is such a beautiful, cool looking everything. Mm -hmm. oh boy. Second last pose, everybody. Second last pose. We're almost there, everyone. I know. We right? tried it. We did so well today, just by showing up. There's a question on Slido from Esther. Uh, how do you balance your time between practicing, learning art, and doing full art pieces for your portfolio? Oh. Well, it seems like there's a lot of intersections in, in the three of those things, right? Like you can practice, and then the result of it is a full-on 
illustration. Um, it also seems like the way, yeah, I, I feel like I get this one. So, you know, you do a whole bunch of sketches, you do a whole bunch of studies, things like that, you keep them, and then, and then, uh, could just schedule in, okay, well, let's take one of those sketches and make it into an illustration. Just like what we were talking about with these ones, we were automatically kind of going, oh, this pose, this pose. I, I want to keep going with this and make it into a whole story and a whole illustration. So that kind of thing. Many times um, I go to my little sketches that I did or little studies for inspiration you know, for my next creation. And just because these are timed doesn't mean that you can't keep going on these things, even afterwards. You know, a lot of times I'll keep going on them, just paint them up a little bit more before I post them. It's okay, you know, it's not cheating. This isn't a test. <laughs> You're just doing this for yourself. Love all these uh, pictures, though. These uh, these models here, they're great. They're great. It's really nice acting, getting into the character. Very great looks. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for pointing these guys out to me, uh, Patricia. Yeah, Patricia. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, every time I, I look at them, I get like armor envy. Not that I have any armor, but <laughs> it's just you wish you had. <laughs> For real. Maybe Nell will surprise you with some armor one day. You could <laughs> ride your your pony <laughs> with your armor on. <laughs> That'd be cool. I suddenly remember Patricia once gave me as a gift for my birthday like a sword LARPing lessons. But we what? never got around to doing them. I just forgot. <laughs> but like uh yeah. Oh my god, it's so sweet. One day. <laughs> One day. Someday maybe kind of list. Everybody should have a someday maybe list. Oh, such an awesome drawing, Bobby. Hey, thanks. I kind of like this one, honestly. <laughs> Usually I'd be like, nah, this one I kind of like. You're doing it. That's because I'm not doing color. See, the last one I really suffered with the color. Uh, actually, it wasn't that bad, but this one, I like it so much more because i just dealing with the, the black and white. Smart. It's an interesting helmet she has. Like it's a, it's such huge on top. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you really notice 
but it also kind of makes sense somehow. Maybe this is the helmet for um, knights with really long hair or something. There's a, a request uh, for a 90 Mac with hands. A lot of hands. Okay. Cool. Yeah, let us know if uh, anybody else would like that. Hands. Your jazz hands as well. Jazz hands, yeah. That's <laughs> There's no other hands to jazz hands. <laughs> Every pose is like this. <laughs> I remember from years ago that we used to go to these events where you could buy this stuff in real life. You would just see it hanging in front of you. Then it's really hard to resist. <laughs> yeah. And when we first started going to Comic Cons and stuff, I also would look at those kind of things, but then I'm traveling, so I can't buy weapons. <laughs> it's like hard. I don't know. I don't want to try. <laughs> all right so that's 10 minutes everybody yay last uh last one last one though Whoa. yeah last one okay is that the last one shoot where'd it go here's the last one so again we don't have to draw everything <laughs> now you got two knights <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I know, I know. Don't have to draw everything, everybody. Okay, screw it. Let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. Scribbly. Scribbly. <laughs> I feel like this image is just about. If there was still anyone left that wasn't struggling, this is when they struggle as well. <laughs> this is the one to humble us all. <laughs> to remind us we still have an infinite amount that to learn. Yes. All right, screw it. I'm doing it. I'm going to bring in that second person. Here we go. No regrets. Because the two of them together looks really cool. Well, it's such a nice photo. Yeah. Also, when you're done, when you're done the 90 Mac, okay, uh, upload it, post it so we can all see it, you know, and we can all kind of connect with each other as well. Um, tag K and I so that we'll see it a lot easier okay you can feel free to tag us uh, we always love checking them out and many times i will share my favorites um, yeah. i've been seeing some like awesome professionals doing this stuff too which has been really great to see <laughs>
Someone made a really good pun in YouTube chat. Set of 90 Mac. 90 Mac. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second to understand that. <laughs> it's like, it's not the same yes, thing. Oh, I get it. I get it. Good one. Definitely, uh, this one definitely humbles, humbles you, this topic. Yes. <laughs> it's great, though. I don't feel like we did too bad, though, honestly. Okay. I feel pretty <laughs> good about it. Yeah. Yeah, I was, like, very kind of, like, I was really really thinking about this one a lot more than others because of how much detail there is and armor and everything but uh yeah i feel pretty good about it I feel like I know when the drawing is going to go badly when I, when I say to myself, oh, this is going pretty good. <laughs> you jinxed yourself? Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. I was looking at this and it's going, oh, this is actually looking pretty good. It and then I'm like, oh, no. Okay, don't slow down. I find myself slowing down. It's so it's weird. It's so weird like that. Okay. Yeah. Get it going again. Do you guys struggle ever with like finishing a painting you were excited about and then something else happens and then you're getting more distracted to another piece and to get back to finish that piece or? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I got tons of paintings. <laughs> like half done kind of little bits and pieces. I love how you could read that like deeper thought into just the oh yeah, like oh yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like guilty for I'm like oh I left you alone for so long I should dust you off you deserve a little bit better you know, um, but how do you combat that like um, for yourself 
uh, when you think like, okay, I want to pick up this project again uh, to to meet it with fresh eyes and finish the artwork. I think it's a good thing though. You know, like some things that really are difficult for me is like when I'm done a piece that took me forever and I don't have another piece that I'm thinking of doing next, right? And it's like, it's hard to kind of restart everything and go, okay, now what's the next one? Um, but if you always have things that are kind of like half going, it's much easier to go on to that next thing. Oh, that's a nice way to look yeah. at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Options. It's totally true. It's totally true. A lot of times the thing that stops me nowadays is just like, is this idea worth my time to invest into like painting it? And that stops me. So if I already have a bunch of ideas that I'm excited about, and they're all kind of like half kind of done, or at least started some way somehow, it's so much easier to just throw down another mark. And that makes you want to throw down more marks. Do you guys have a piece that you repa repaint every maybe year or two years to see uh, like how much you progressed or something similar towards I've like a subject? I've seen people do that. Yeah. I don't think I've ever done that. Okay, you don't do that. No. <laughs> but nothing I, wrong with it. But Yeah, nothing wrong with it. Oh my goodness, end of the line, Kay. Do you want to go a little bit longer on this? You're good. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, hold on one sec. Did you maybe have when you were in school or more early in your career when um, you have this like idea in your mind and you know what you want to paint and how it must look, but you're not there yet in skill wise and that you might pick it up later, maybe in your sketchbooks or like rough ideas. Yeah, that happens a lot. Nico and the Sword of Light actually came from an idea I gave to a, a an intern of ours for his uh, student film, but then he didn't take it. And then we took it and made it into a whole Emmy-winning TV show. <laughs> I, I actually, my sound cut out for a sec as you were asking the first part of that question, so I hope it actually relates to what you're saying. <laughs> uh, it was just like when you're, um, yeah, may maybe it is, I don't know. <laughs> I think it was. I think it, it could was. be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was, I was also mentioning when my sound cut out, I was saying that the time is up, but we can keep going a little bit if you like. So I don't mind going a little bit longer on this just to kind of make something cool looking. Maybe just um, another, what, minute or two at the most, Kay? Oh, yeah, we're chilling. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just want to do a little something more. Someone is asking where they uh, should send their 90 Mac drawings. You just want to upload them to like your Instagram or your Twitter or whatnot. And then you want to hashtag it 90 min art challenge. And you could also tag K and I so that we'll see them in, uh, in our feeds. But this way, you know, anybody can just click on the hashtag, you know, especially after you post it, you could click on the hashtag and see all the other posts of everybody else's 90 Max.
Yeah, I wonder how everyone will do with the shiny armor and so many pieces. <laughs> It'll be fun to see them. Absolutely. This one is a difficulty level. I'd say, yeah, this one's high. This one's very high. Would you give this one a difficulty of 10k or maybe not, right? Mm -hmm. I think if they had horses with armor, then for sure 10. <laughs> <laughs> right? If they're like riding horses and with armor. Yeah. I think 10 is when there's absolutely no way that you can get everything down. How are you going to do it? You know, that's when... I would give something a 10. And sometimes the horses can have armor too, like very elaborate ones. Yeah. That's tricky. Exactly. You have double armor. There. Exactly. That's when I would say, all right, that's a 10. Remember before, in the beginning, I would be like, uh, I would do this thing with this sorcerer bunny, and we would ask the sorcerer bunny, how difficult is this challenge? And then he would always say something very low <laughs> to make it's us feel so bad. <laughs> I thought it was funny, but I just didn't want anybody to feel bad, so I stopped doing it. Back the bunny. <laughs> well, also, it's like this extra layer of work, and on, I, I just, I'm struggling a little bit if I put on any more work onto my plate. I love your design, Kay. Jeez. Oh my gosh, you're just so nice. Mine is. It's, it's a great. knight. It's a knight it's with, uh, you know, with a woman uh, behind as another knight and stuff. But I love your design. You look really oh, great. Thank you so much. All right. I think we're good here. Um, I got another thing coming up in the afternoon anyways. So I think we could call it a day. Call it a day. All right. So great job, everybody. Great job. Great job to uh, all of the attendees and YouTube and, and Discord. Post your stuff with the hashtag 90 Min Art Challenge, and uh, we can all see them. We can all see each other's drawings. And next week, it's going to be deer. That's the subject. We're going to be painting deer. So if you thought this was difficult, it's okay. Come back. Deer. To next time it'll be a, a lot easier okay and uh yeah a big shout out to lightbox expo and schoolism.com take care everybody and have a great rest of your day thank you everyone